Today on the Transplant Helper, I'm going to share with you the most important questions you can possibly ask your general practitioners every time you go in for a visit. Stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to become part of the Transplant Helper community. Hey folks, welcome back to the Transplant Helper again today. My name is Jim Merle and I happen to be a 2013 heart transplant recipient survivor as well as a 1975 congenital heart defect survivor. And I only bring that up right now because I honestly believe that makes me more than qualified to share with you on this particular topic. When it comes to being poked, prodded, stuck, and or quite embarrassed sometimes inside of doctor's offices and or hospitals, I I've been there and done that. I've got the card to prove it. Therefore, I have just a little bit of experience over the course of the last 47 years in facing doctors and asking the right questions. Now, you know as well as I do, and I've certainly learned the hard way, if you do not ask the right questions, you will not receive the right answers oftentimes when you go in and sit down with these physicians. So it's very important to have that arsenal, if you will, of questions to use as you step into the office. And I want to share with you today some of those questions I think will be of utmost importance, particularly when you go in for the common cold, flu, or virus, or mysterious illness like you and I seem to contract from time to time as post-transplant immunosuppressed patients. And so if you go in with these questions, I think you'll be ahead of the game right out of the gate. Okay, so with that being said, the very first question, number one I would ask is this, am I contagious okay now since covid all of us are much more aware of this than we used to be but i can honestly say back about 10 years ago i was pretty much ignorant to the fact that you could actually be contagious from anything past about 24 hours or so i can remember the very first time i heard and learned that for example with the flu you can oftentimes be contagious up to one or two days prior to having symptoms and then in turn be contagious believe it or not up to seven days after the symptoms have ceased to exist. Now, I was raised hard, okay? I was raised with a with a parent, a mother, father, whatever, grandmother. Everybody was this way back in 1970-ish, but who basically looked at a child and said, hey, if you don't have a fever today, you're going to school. <laughs> and maybe we've been sick for a week, but, you know, we just didn't understand. There was not as much understanding of contagions and how those things worked, and there was really no understanding of a wild child that was back at themselves without a fever that they probably didn't need to go back to school and expose others. We understand that now. COVID has taught us those lessons the hard way. And so it's very important before you leave the physician's office, perhaps, to ask them that question, am I contagious? And that's the first question I would ask. Number next, before leaving the office, I would probably ask them, as strangely as it may seem, what websites do you trust? Okay, now, all these physicians, they already realize it. He and she already know before you leave the office, you're going to become like I am. You're going to be a Google Doc. You're going to get on the computer. You're going to get on your phone. You're going to look things up. You're going to find out what condition you have, what the treatments are, what the procedures might be associated with that, the medications that you've been prescribed or would be prescribed for it, the side effects. You're going to try to find all of that out probably before you get out of the parking lot. And they already know that. So it's always a good idea to ask them what websites and or resources they might recommend for you to get good, reliable information. There's so much information information out there on the web not this video, but so much information out there on the web where you just get downright misleading information, downright silly things being told to you as far as what you're dealing with medical-wise, and you don't need to trust those things. Believe it or not, TikTok is not the best place to go for reliable medical information. I would suggest looking at websites like the Cleveland Clinic, like the Mayo Clinic, pretty much any university-type medical training facility or hospital. You can generally get good information on those and you can check those out but it's even still a better idea to ask your specific physician while you have them there and you have them as a captive audience ask them what websites do they trust what resources do they use and they can probably lead you in a very good direction where you can get that accurate information so that's a question that i would ask at least before i leave the office 
Number next, if they're going to be prescribing to you any medication, I would ask them two questions related to that. Number one, why am I taking the medication? And number two, what are the side effects? This is kind of related to the previous question. It's better to ask them why. Ask them why I'm on this medication. Why are you prescribing this? Why is this the right medication for me specifically as an individual? Because believe it or not, physicians oftentimes get in a hurry, they get busy, or they just get overwhelmed. And oftentimes, they'll prescribe the same medications one after the other after the other, particularly in a general practitioner situation to pretty much everybody that walks in. So it's always best to ask them, why am I taking this medication? What good is it going to do me? What are the success rates? What is the the fail rate of this medication? And then add to that, what are the side effects? Because you can go home and I do this Boy, I do this. You can look on WebMD or you can pick up the medication from the pharmacy. You can open that little pamphlet, you know, the one that's like, like that long and you can open it up and read it and before long even by the third or fourth line you're probably going to be terrified and not wanting to take that medication although we understand all medications do come with side effects or or other issues that may be outlying you've got to outweigh the benefit and the risk right here and sometimes the best way to do that is by asking that question of your physician before you even leave the office let them give you the information let them tell you about the specific patient situations or cases that they've dealt with and they'll probably give you the better information right there and cut down on the fear that you may have of that medication so you can take it and hopefully it'll improve and help you to get better so i would ask that for sure before i left the office Number next, if they've done any testing in the office or maybe they're sending you out for testing ask them this question what's this test for why am I taking this? Is this the most reliable test for this? Does this give good, accurate results? Does this just rule something out or does it prove what I have? Ask them why you're going through this test. You know, some tests are easy. It may be a little simple blood draw, although for some that's not easy, but it may be a blood draw. It may be, you know, a swab in the mouth or something like that. Other tests are difficult. You may have to go in for a real procedure where it's very invasive and sometimes downright dangerous. You want to know what that testing is for and what that test will prove or disprove that's so important because again just like the previous point sometimes doctors will say well if you've got a you know if you've got a cough and a cold you need a chest x-ray and a ct and a and a, a biopsy and a swab and they may prescribe to you things that simply are not that necessary in your given specific case so what i would ask them that what is this test for number next before leaving the office i would ask them when and if I should follow up. You know, I I leave the doctor's office so many times without asking half of these questions, and particularly not this one, because honestly, if I've been in the doctor that day and probably like us all waiting in that waiting room forever, I don't really want to come back. But oftentimes it's very important to come back. Those follow-ups, you know, finishing the medication, coming back in for that secondary chest X-ray or something like that could be very important. You may need to follow up for refills and such as that. So I would be sure to ask them, when should I follow up? They may tell you to come back tomorrow. They may tell you back to come, in, come back in two weeks. They may just say, well, follow up with me if you have the certain issues, you know, and you'll have the best information in that. So I would ask that question when should I follow up? Number next, if you're like I am and the physician kind of seems to be a little bit uh, unsure of themselves or something like that, and they're beginning to dish out all the options and all the possibilities, a great question to ask them is this, what would you do if this was your family member? What would you do if this was your parent or your child or your sibling or your brother or sister? Ask them that question because although they, although they cannot give you very specific information about other patients, they can easily illustrate to you why they would choose an option over another if it concerns their own family. And a lot of times you'll get them down on a more human level, say they're busy and they're in and out of the office. You get them down on a more human level when you look them in the eyes and say, what would you do if this was with your family you'll get great advice from doing that so that's again one of those questions i would ask before i leave the office number next and the last one here this is a very serious one and one that i've been hesitant to ask in the past but i've learned the hard way you better ask and that is ask them how much experience do you have 
in dealing with this situation or a condition like this. I can still remember back, it's been almost, uh, what, 12, 15 years ago. I was at a hospital in another state, okay, another state. I'm not going to name it, but in another state. And I was being evaluated for a heart transplant back then. And I can remember going in that room for the first time, sitting down with those physicians, and they had just finished up an echocardiogram. So a good examination of my chest, my heart, different things. They just finished that up. And during the course of that particular particular exam, I can remember the technicians in there saying, wow, this is neat. I've never seen anything like this. And so that made me think about it. And so when I went in to the actual transplant doctors a few minutes later, and I was dealing again with that congenital heart defect that was a little bit different than most transposition of the great vessels or arteries, they call it. I'd grown up with that. And now I was a potential heart transplant candidate. And so I looked my doctor in the eye that day. I didn't know a lot about him. It wasn't the same ones I'd grown grown up with or had known for a while and I said doc I gotta ask you straight up have you done much have you transplanted very many people in this facility who had had prior to this transposition of the great vessels and he was honest and he said no actually I haven't and I needed to know that because one, that's just being honest. Okay. That's the main thing. It's just being honest. But two, that allowed me to reconsider my choices and think, you know, it may be better at the time it was, it was actually better for my family to move from another state back to my home state of Alabama. So I could get back to my team, back to someone who I knew for a fact had already dealt with this. And that's a major thing with a transplant, but that could be true about anything. Even when you're in the general practitioner's office, they die knows you one thing or another they prescribed you a medication or another just look them in the eye and say look what type of experiences do you have in dealing with a patient like me and hopefully they'll be honest and if they tell you they have none you've got a choice to make if they tell you they've had plenty that'll give you some confidence so you can go along your way so hopefully these questions will be helpful to you hopefully each of them will be some things that you can ask and therefore like i said in the beginning when you ask good questions you get great answers okay and hopefully you will do that the next time you go in to see your physician but until next time here Stay stronger, friends.